Well, I think you have to come back to what was happening in this area at that time. There was no business here in the wintertime. Uh, the people came up from Chicago or from Milwaukee or from the major metropolitan areas and they would water ski or swim or fish and in the wintertime they would close all the resorts, they would close all the restaurants because there was nothing really to do here. So once the snowmobile was invented, all the local business people were very enthused about promoting the snowmobile business. They developed clubs uh, and the all of the restaurants and the bars and the resorts and snowmobiling really made all of the businesses as you would drive through town today. So snowmobiling was growing at a, at a very rapid rate so Yamaha getting into this business early was very important. Just think about it for a second from a Yamaha motorcycle dealer standpoint. The only thing the motorcycle dealer had to sell during that time was a few models of motorcycle. All I remember about when the SL350 came to our store, and keeping in mind I'm 10 years old when this is going on, his dad said Yamaha is going to get in the snowmobile business. So it was kind of like Christmas when you opened a box. We got it he, took it, he took it out of the box, and I remember him opening it up. He said, wow, it looks like a motorcycle engine. It looks just like a YR1 uh, 350 Yamaha motorcycle motor kind of transplanted into a snowmobile. And, and they raced it and they they would break things and they would reinforce things and they would fix things and they would modify things and when they were done with it it was amazing every year we, we came with more and more models from 1967 on but we were able to have very good dealers now that had a product for the summer and had a product for the winter i started in racing yamaha was uh, through a dealer at home in monaco wisconsin and uh, we were winning quite a bit of races myself and the two cousins Yamaha Corp or the company um, had seen this, so we just naturally kind of went into a factory type uh, racing team. Of course, one of the very first races we went to was the Great Battle. Okay, once again, here are the drivers. Yvonne Hamal, the defending champion. Mike Trapp, 41, Yamaha. Between Mike Trapp and Ivan Dohamo, the little 433 Yamaha challenging the big, well-known factory teams of Skidoo and Articat and Polaris. But we didn't have a performance image. We had a dependability image, and that's where racing really finally put us over the top. 15 laps, the world's championship from Eagle River, and we're going to be quiet because you're going to hear a roar when they take off, and here we go. The lightness of the sled was quite a bit of an advantage in that I could come into the corner with less weight with a faster speed. Ivan Duhamel has an early lead on that skidoo, but the Trap Brothers are right behind him. Handle uh, better than the uh, sled with the 800. I have to keep the power on going down the straightaway and figure out where they're at, or inside or outside, and take advantage of that part of being so light. During the race of the 15 lap, it was like 15 or 20 lead changes back and forth. They are running as close as any two machines could. He would pass me on the back straightaway, I'd catch him on the front straightaway. The him grabbing my hand, uh, just didn't like my presence around there, you know what I mean? One more lap to go, one more lap. Finally, when I did come out of number four, I kind of looked back over my shoulder there, and there was actually nobody there. To Hamill is up! He spun around, Mike Trapp is going to be the winner. And here's the checkered flag for Mike Trapp, Yamaha is the world's champion at Eagle River, Wisconsin. So to go to that race and then to see Yamaha win, like wow, geez dad, Yamaha is like the coolest snowmobile ever built. I thought you, uh, Ron was still behind me there, I, looked, I don't know if he spun all the way. Right. Did you guys ever uh, collide during the race? A couple of times, yeah. And all of a sudden Yamaha wins the world championship. You rode a Yamaha, you were a winner. And uh, we, we did so well the first year that I think it just surprised everybody, maybe even Yamaha. And unbelievable uh, what had happened. It was almost like somebody opened the door that put us on the map. You know, I, I, you've got to go back to 1967 
And this is the first prototype that the Yamaha dealers would have seen. Do you remember the horsepower of this? 24 horse, if my memory yeah, is right. That wow. was a big Which was deal. a lot of horsepower back then. Yeah, that was because a big a lot, deal. A lot of sleds had 12 horse. Yeah. And I think the other thing that made Yamaha really stand out is, you know, like you touched on, Jim, was the detail. Yeah. You know, the crawl, yeah, the, finish. the adjustable headlight, you know. Three years later, Mike takes this lightweight machine and he wins the world championship, beats everybody with all this technology from all those other companies all over the world. You know, it's unbelievable for me to realize it's been 50 years. Yes. Yes. I mean, I was there and I lived it, but I, I still don't quite believe it. Yes. You know. Can, yes, can you imagine? So, 1971. So, you've got the snowmobile that you had at Eagle River, you're on the line, and you have this. Yes, and I, I do still feel the passion to ride, you know, uh, as I did 50 years ago. Uh, it's still, I still love the sport. And that yeah. truly is said, Jim, the passion never leaves you. Yeah, the is. passion for the sport never leaves you, you know. So this is my opportunity to say I'm so proud to know you yeah. guys and to have you guys here, honestly. And yeah. uh, you made my job well, so tremendously thank much you. easier you can't imagine. So thank you. Thank you, thank you very, very, much. very, very much. That's very nice of you to say.